This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, episode number 31. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co-creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com and are dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. The topic of the week this week is Understanding a Holistic Approach to Natural Vision Improvement, Part 3, The Mind. And in the second half of the podcast, we're going to be addressing a question from an emailer who asks us, what are pinhole glasses good for? So Richard, how's the world of self-healing been treating you this week? Well, I've been rounding up my house, as you have witnessed, and mm-hmm. it was my birthday yesterday, actually, too, so that's happened. So I've been experimenting with, I've been practicing uh, a Gerson diet, okay. did a couple dif- different days. You were with me on one day. Yeah. And uh, yeah. By that, you mean you just had two salads in one day? I've never <laughs> eaten two salads in my life in you- one day. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I know it's hard to believe. Yeah. You you weren't necessarily following it strictly, the actual Gerson diet. No, I suppose you're right. <laughs> you just had two salads. I had two salads. That's <laughs> how I was practicing for it. Yeah. You were clear. You, you moved to a vegetarian diet. In order, it's true. Or vegan, because we didn't have any cheese or uh, sour cream on the, yes, on exactly. the chili that we had. So, uh, yeah, the chili. Yeah. So we had trouts. That we go in and order trout salads without trout now. <laughs> and uh, that's the Gerson version of the salad. And uh, yeah, and then we had another salad for dinner and juice in between. So it's it's I'm warming up. So I'm warming up because yeah. I'm going down to Redlands, California next week. Okay, nice for a five day uh, Gerson. Uh, you could call it course. It's kind of a training. Yeah, it's it's for me personally. It's for me professionally. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sort of get me rebooted after this house experience of the last four <laughs> months. So I'm going to rest up. And do juices. I think they do it ten times a day, twelve times a day, something like that. Okay. And they feed you three meals a day, and you educate you on the benefits of eating strictly vegan, strictly organic, and juicing this you know ten, twelve times a day. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to listening next week and yeah. see how uh, how you get on and uh, if you're still alive. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So. If you're not, this podcast isn't going to be as fun doing it. <laughs> no, it won't be, won't be. <laughs> I'll just pretend I'm talking to you anyway. If my voice suddenly gets very squeaky and weak, <laughs> yeah, you'll know yeah. why. Yeah. How's the word of self-healing true to you this week, Richard? Fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I shrank 12 inches. No. See, this is, this is the kind of paranoia that uh, meat eaters have about this kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you've, you've spent years experimenting, well, and living yeah. more vegetarian. And for me... I've always been convinced that I need meat. Yeah, I suppose for me, I didn't have a choice where I was living in, uh, in all funny places all around the world. The, right. The meat that I was getting wasn't that great, and I got sick quite a few few times. So, I, I mean, I was, I was a heavy meat eater. Yeah. Um, as you can imagine, being a, being a bit of a jock in my time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was the same, but I guess when it came down to it, um, and it was a health reason to actually not eat meat, right? Because you were I was getting imminent sick health reason, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like threatening your health otherwise. Yeah. Then, um, then yeah, it's amazing how easy actually it is to to not yeah. eat meat. No, um, and that practice day I did it. with you was enlightening, and that uh, well, I got a little lightheaded, but that was because we weren't juicing enough on that day. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think you had eaten enough either. You'd only you, uh, you had okay. one egg for breakfast, I think. If I yeah, I had right. one egg and an orange juice for breakfast. You're right, and uh, we didn't we didn't have lunch, which was a salad till maybe two o'clock. You're right. You're right. That was. Um, I guess it's expecting too much. <laughs> but anyone that is thinking on uh, trying new healthy diets. Then uh, certainly, just like what Richard is describing here, you want to try and be observant, just like with the vision exercises on things like what Richard was saying there, how he was sort of getting tired and fatigued. And I guess you sort of need to question, what is it? You know, is it because you don't have the meat? Is it because you're not necessarily having as many carbs? Or is it that you're not having enough greens and fruits and vegetables or... You know, you sort of, um, I know particular, maybe particular fruits and vegetables, if I eat more of one thing than the other, then I might start feeling particularly different because of that. So I guess it's just sort of mapping it out and discovering how your body functions because everyone's different, I guess. Yeah. So what will come out of this, hopefully, is an experience of, well, 
better health in general and to extend my life. I'm hoping for that too. Mm. And my health of my life as mm-hmm. I get older. And if it can affect the vision, well, that's sort of an open question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's certainly uh, what drew me in the first place is, is because they, they're known to help at certain types of cancer right. and uh, particular diseases. Or... And ed- edema, swelling too, right? Yeah. 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 So... In fact, there, w- there was a woman um, who had or has retinitis pigmentosa. She was a journalist for The Guardian uh, in the UK. And um, this is how I sort of found out about it. And she was saying how she did the Gerson therapy either for three weeks or for three months. And she followed it very strictly. Um, and that she got her vis- her peripheral vision tested before and, and okay. after. Um, mm-hmm. And the doctor said, no, the no change. The Gerson therapy hasn't done anything. Your periphery is exactly the same. So she was a bit disappointed. But the doctor did say, well, the edema has gone. And uh, she had actually Im- improved a whole line on the eye chart. Right. Um, but there's no proof that the Gerson therapy did that. It could have. I don't know. It could have been. Uh, oh, it could have been cyclical or something. Yeah, maybe the wind changed. Yeah, right. You know, who, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Um, There's always an explanation if it doesn't fit the medical model. You know? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and unfortunately, this woman didn't carry on because she she said that she would actually rather go blind than uh, than eat the Gerson than diet. have to follow the Gerson. That's therapy. encouraging, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is nice. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so that's certainly one thing that has drawn me to it, and I and I'm pretty confident i i saw some some big changes just from juicing regularly and and cutting out more dairy and uh, right. and meat and having more fruits and vegetables in my diet as well as the regular juicing so yeah i'm um, be really interested to see what what you yeah. come across and uh see what you bring back yeah to the table yeah vegetables hopefully <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. a little bit of uh, fruit fruit but no salt no salt right <laughs> so how was your week yeah, good. I uh, after uh, last week, this uh, the weekend just gone. I actually went camping up in the redwoods, right? Uh, which was which is great. It's the first time I've actually been camping in California, and it's something that when I was in Kenya, I really enjoyed doing. And um, I've always felt that it really helps my vision as well when I do go camping because it's an opportunity mm. to be out in the dark. But this time, actually, I was I was a little bit anxious because. Um, we were the newbies and it was a, it was a group of friends right. that were going and, and we were turning up late. So it was going to be dark and we were going to have to set the tent up in the oh. dark. And uh, I'm not, once I get my, my social footing, I'm fine. But the thing that I, that I'm nervous about the most and anxious about the most is the initial meet yep. and greet. Yep. Cause it's shaking hands right. and hi. And you know, I don't know where hands are. I don't know where people are. Right. So uh, I guess I must say that I was pretty anxious about that on the way up and I, I was sort of doing my peripheral vision exercises in the car on the way up <laughs> That's great. Uh, where I was sort of looking forward and, and getting the periphery activated. And as it was getting darker and darker, I was sort of trying to put my attention in the darker areas where it was outside so that when I turned up, my eyes were going to be, be more adjusted to the yeah. dark yeah. than if I was looking at a light. Um, so doing these sort of things. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it, I guess uh, I was feeling... Pretty confident, anxious, but confident. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, we turn up and uh, people are already sitting around a, a smallish campfire. And it's yeah. sort of a... It's a big, bright area with dark around it, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So, and it was more of a parking lot than right, right. it was an actual campground. <laughs> I'd never experienced these before. Um, I will, uh, uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll put a picture up on the Facebook fan page of our tent that was put up in the dark. So there's a reason why it looks that bad. <laughs> um, and uh, we also had to sleep on rocks, which is uh, which is an ex- oh. it was like a camper van uh, yeah. sort of uh, place instead of uh, instead of an actual tent. Camper right. Van. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so trying to put that in the dark and saying hi to people and you know didn't really recognise people and right. trying to shake hands and whatnot. Um, so it was fine apart from, um, I went to shake somebody's hand in the wrong place like, cause I've learned now that to be the first person to put your ah, hand out to shake. So then good point. Yeah. Cause the, the social, uh, otherwise they're standing there waiting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sort of inadequacy is, is, you know, you put your hand in the right. So wherever you put your hand first, they have to follow. Otherwise they're the ones being rude. Right. Even if it's in the wrong direction, I guess they still have to do it. <laughs> um, sometimes, a lot of the time people just laugh or, cause people don't know, right. They, they have yeah, no yeah. concept of, of yeah. RP or anything like this. So, um, anyway, I, I said hi and I recognized a few people and, and it was fine. 
and I could sort of see the, the bit of the light coming off the fire on people's faces so I could make them out. So um, I'm pretty sure the anxiety was was making uh, things a lot worse than sure. what it needed to be because you're not sure. thinking straight. And, yep. you know, anyway, so uh, this one guy shook my fiancé's hand and then I put my hand out first right to shake his hand and my fiancé said, uh, no, and she grabbed my hand and moved it in a in a different direction. Oh, yeah, okay. And um, he, I don't know why, I put my hand the same place where he had shook her hand for some reason, he had moved his hand to then shake ah, my hand afterwards. You were trying to overthink it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so uh, so it was fine, and they, you know, sort of just like, and and after after about an hour, um, I went and got some food and settled in and chatting, and because any any new social circle is can sometimes be intimidating anyway. Oh yeah, right? and the, yeah. you know, and you don't want to make a fool of yourself. Yeah, um, but once. I noticed that once I was sitting down around the fire, I could see everybody's faces and wow. and I could function fine. And it and other than um, you know negotiating where the where the firewood is and um, you know where the seats are and um, what people were sitting where. You know, last week we talked about memory and how that played a right. big role in vision. And right. once I could remember right. where the firewood was, where the picnic table was, where the tent was. Then it was easier to navigate. Right. So, uh, but yeah, after that it was it was fine and it was smooth smooth sailing all the way after that um, initial and I, and I still reckon it was fifty percent my anxiety, fifty percent yes not being able to see that well in the dark. Yeah. But I did tweet this week. I don't know whether anybody noticed, um, and I did come back that um, as much as I've done this big improvement this week, the uh, the stars are still very elusive. Um, oh everyone's yeah! Like, wow, I've never seen stars so beautiful before. Oh. Look at those stars! And I'm like looking up, and all I can see is sort of these little white flashes. Anyway, just I just pretend they're stars. Anyway, yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm still working on that. Still, uh, still got a while mm. to go before I can start seeing uh, seeing thousands of stars. But mm. um, but I'll get there. Yep, I'll get yep. there at some point. Yeah. Um, but just the fact that you know I could I could function pretty comfortably. Yeah, um, in that environment, and I look forward now to going again, um, but in a more low key situation, right? And just sort of enjoy the uh... yeah, because we do live in a city, and it's it is rare for us to be in the dark. Yeah, even in apart from when we uh, when I'm palming for well, that's true. Palming. Yeah, but I mean, walking around in the dark, it's hard to find somewhere that in yeah. the city that's not that's that dark. Yeah, so it's an and opportunity. I, I do think if I was used to it, I know when I was camping in, you know, a lot in Kenya. I was camping every weekend. I was used wow. to it. Um, the same as ironically when I was, you know, uh, going to clubs and uh, bars. <laughs> um, but I was used to those dark environments. Yeah. And now when I go in, it's sort of, whoa. <laughs> All right, I guess it's the city city dwellers uh uh, night walk then is to go to, into the in, go to a disco I guess yeah. I'm not sure if I'm doing some really shady nightclub with no <laughs> lights so you can't there see you the people hmm. um, so anyway that, that was uh, uh, interesting but I'd, I certainly spent this week focusing still on, on my peripheral meditation and uh-huh. and still engaging this periphery a lot more mm-hmm. and uh, I spent a good uh, good day yesterday really trying to get to grips with it and trying oh, to good. understand it and all the rest of it so uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to see more of what it produces yeah. i'm still trying to turn my frustration into motivation um when yeah. you know i just want to see more i just want to see more um, well oh and then we went bowling last night for my birthday right yeah 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 and, and in, yeah in fact i did get a picture of you as well i'm gonna all right i'll, I'll stick one up because richard did clean up last night <laughs> but i reckon that was because people knew it was his birthday so yeah they that's was letting right. him win that's true it's not like i had a high score or anything but. <laughs> what are you trying to say that my score is exceptionally low uh yes it was <laughs> <laughs> all right let's not go there all right but you did notice when you first started practicing you mentioned that you were uh, oh no it was when you first started bowling a game you mentioned that by pay, paying more attention to your proof or you you got I a better improved. you improved yeah right? it, was, it was funny because i'd spent a big portion of the day really trying to tune into the periphery and doing lots of peripheral exercises and the peripheral ah. meditation and all the rest of it and then so i was doing it on the bus and i turned up and once i'd adjusted to the dark so i got to start bowling and i noticed that um so before when i was trying to be i'm trying to do peripheral activity so like um, vacuuming the house whilst being aware of my right. conscious, doing the washing up whilst being aware of my periphery as well. Right. The same as uh, vacuuming with the periphery. So, but of course, as soon as I get in, bowling, you know, I've not really done it that much. Right. And I go into the bowl and I'm, I'm looking straight at the line 
to make sure I don't go oh, over it. Oh, okay. I'm looking straight where the um, where the ball should land because I don't want to smash uh, the ground or, or, or throw anything. it into the gutter. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I get it. So, um, so I did a few times like that, and I thought, okay, tune into the periphery. You've been doing this all day. Yeah. So what I did is I looked in between the uh, the pins and that place. So I was right. using my periphery in both, and I was able to concentrate on the pins even though they were in what i would call fuzz still because they were white in contrast to the dark background they came relatively clear um and so i was able to bowl and as soon as i did that i got a strike yeah <laughs> yeah i remember you get a strike I I got like two in a row wow um so um that's so, probably yeah, what i do as well I, I think i do look in that place now i never really thought about it but i yeah. don't definitely don't look down at the line i mean i glance at it you know mm-hmm. as i'm coming but then I'm looking, yeah, more forward. And maybe because of my vision, I can't see the pins, so I'm, I'm only looking <laughs> half. Nobody really knows how everybody sees, probably, yeah. you know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether you look at the pins or the yeah. markings. I don't know what other that. people do, but that's but, what I do. But it was good. It was yeah. good. I enjoyed it a, a lot more. Good. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's interesting learning to use peripheral vision. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm enjoying it. Good. It's good work. Good. So I think it's about a good time to move on to topic of the week. And the topic of the week this week is Understanding a Holistic Approach to Natural Vision Improvement, Part 3, The Mind. And this week, um, when we're looking at the mind, so as we're talking about this holistic approach, we've chosen five main areas, the brain, the mind, the body, blood flow, and uh, nutrition. So in particular, in Part 3 here, we're going to be talking about the mind. And in particular, we've identified motivation, emotion, and habit as three main things to do with the mind. Obviously, this is a huge topic and yeah. we're, we're covering in a lot more detail in the future. Um, but just sort of briefly today, we're going to be looking uh, in particular uh, motivation. Now, for me, I mean, obviously, this is quite key because if you don't have the motivation in the first place, then it's difficult to do the exercises. It's difficult. Right. I mean, anyone that's just listening to this podcast now has already done that first step at least they've got enough motivation to be seeking how to improve their eyesight naturally and i guess that's a big first step it is it is just getting that yeah a clear vision of the of the future of your vision and how you're going to improve it and it's funny because different people have different levels of motivation for example myself i have very high motivation to do this because if i don't i'm right. going to go blind right. so it really is uh, do or die i guess or right. do or blind right um if i don't because uh, my father uh, is is legally blind so you know I, I can see my prognosis if i don't do the exercises then then i can see firsthand my future so to speak so um so i know i need to do these exercises and i have to do them on a regular basis yeah and, and i i would say my motivation is a little weaker in the sense that um i've been living with this level of vision pretty much my whole life mm-hmm. um i do have relatives who uh their vision got worse with the same genetic condition but it's nowhere near the the degree that you're dealing with yeah. so um it is harder for me to go, well, you know, I could just go along like this. It'd be fine. Yeah. Uh, but I have seen, as I said, my brother's vision got worse mm-hmm. over, uh, and he's it's, older than me. It's maybe twice as bad as yours. It, it is twice as bad, yeah, if not more, actually. And hmm. then I have an, a great uncle who went blind. So, okay. oh, yeah. so there is some motivation. There is some motivation. <laughs> it's easy to distance myself from this great uncle that I never met, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it is definitely out there. <laughs> so and I guess on the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got people maybe trying to get rid of their glasses right you know, point two or whatever um or, and they could just get lazy or you know, know it's just like oh well i'll just do this um and sadly we really find with this work which is something that we're battling to try and change is that people only tend to do this work when they have to when right. it's when it's the last resort they've yeah. tried all these surgeries they've tried all these practices right uh, they're worse off than when they started yeah. or their vision really is at a point where it's deteriorating pretty bad and they need help. Right. So unfortunately, uh, I mean, ideally this would be a preventative method Yep. Um, where we do this stuff. You know, if I'd been doing my eye exercises since day dot, and I'm pretty confident that my vision, you know, would be a lot better than what it is now. Right. Um, I'm confident I would have avoided cataracts and um, the macular hole. I think I would have been more careful with my eyes 
Um, and I guess also with a lot of macular degeneration, uh, you know, old yeah. age and uh, also uh, cataracts, etc. Right. Uh, and I guess people with high myopia, detached retina, you know, yeah. diabetic retinopathy, there's all these glaucoma, yeah. there's all these conditions that could be prevented. Right. Um, or indeed, if, you know, there's early signs, then you can maybe work towards it. So motivation is a very big part um, because if, if we don't have it, then rarely do we do it and if we do do the exercises and you know we maybe do it for a couple of months but yeah if that motivation isn't there in the first place and it's not deep then right you just give up you do oh these are exercises that work Wait, i still I, can't see in my periphery yeah i mean you are it's funny because it's it's uh an additional sort of thing you have to do in your life so the in the back of your mind like maybe they won't work maybe they won't work yeah you sort of like already sort of predisposed for them not working and then you get a little impatient. Yeah. And actually, you do get results fairly quickly. In, in mm -hmm. our experience, most people see results quickly. Yeah. But then they discount that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, never that, that wasn't really true. You know, I could yeah. always see that. Or, you or, know. Or, or it's, well, I have improved, but it's not what I want to be. You know, yeah, yeah, a, yeah. It's not perfect oh, right now. Oh, I've only improved two lines. Yeah, on the chart, yeah. Whereas before it was impossible. And then a couple of months go, well, I'm still, I might have improved a couple of lines, but I'm still not. Yeah. Where I want it, you know, so it's sort of, uh, like you say, it's discounted. Yeah, so um, that, that's going to be another pattern. The thing yeah. is, is everyone's like that. Like, even me yesterday, when I was really dedicating a lot of time on the on the peripheral vision exercise, I'm thinking, really? I've been, I've been doing this all day. I still can't <laughs> see that well with my periphery, right. you know, compared to everyone else. Right. You know, I, maybe, you know I, I could be doing something else. Maybe I just ride the vision that I've got left for the next exactly. 15 yes, years. Yes. And then just deal with being blind yeah, later on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so everyone goes through yeah, these, but, yeah. and I guess it comes down to your ability to turn it into motivation, right. keep yourself motivated, which is a big reason why we created the Eye Exercise Express right. Quick Start Guide for Improving Eyesight, because it was a it was a way of trying to get people motivated to do the exercises if they were short of time, and then once you start seeing the results, then it keeps you motivated through to the next level. Right. Yeah, that's mainly people's block to motivation is they don't have enough time. So that's why we created those audio tapes to, to uh, give them some tool for overcoming that barrier. So the second part is emotion. And this is obviously a, a lot more difficult. Um, and this is another reason why vision improvement can take time. And, you know, you can't just improve your vision in a couple of weeks. I mean, you, you can see some improvements. But a lot of the time there is some emotion uh, right. behind our vision. Right. And things like... Um, for example, what I was saying about if I bump into something, then it, it creates a negative uh, response, and I, and it reminds me of being embarrassed of bumping into things or mm -hmm. trying to shake somebody's hand around a campfire and right. completely getting it wrong. You know, all these sort of emotions build up, and then we associate them with with particular activities and exercises, and it can be it's a difficult one to work with. Yeah, no, I think anyone who has vision problems is going to be dealing with an emotional element to it. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you you know, when your anxiety builds up, your vision, your peripheral vision lessens. Yeah. Um, and for me, you know, as I as I develop tension in my head, I'm I'm cutting off blood flow to my eyes, which mm -hmm. is going to diminish my vision as well. So it's it plays that factor. Uh, and then, well, the other odd part that that people probably aren't prepared for is sometimes when your vision gets better. Well, number one, you'll discount it. But then number two, sometimes <laughs> it freaks you out a little bit. It's just yeah. like you're excited. And then it's sort of like a little anxiety producing, actually, because you're used to your vision being a certain way. And it's something that we're not gonna, we don't have time to cover here, but it, it changes your self-image. It does. You yeah. know, we all have this image of ourselves. And when you change that, that's, that's scary. Exactly. Uh, and this, I think self-image may relate to motivation, too. I think that's what we're all battling mm. in some ways is we have... You know, you get a certain condition or a vision is, is less and you develop sort of a self-image around that. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes physical habit around that as well. And also a, a particular way you feel you should be treated. Yes. Because of it. Exactly. You know, yeah. you should, um, special measures or, or, or some people the opposite, you know, I don't want to be treated, but I don't want to be yeah. treated any different than it, you know. Yeah. So there, there's all this. Uh, it's complex. And if if anybody doesn't necessarily have uh, a real challenging uh, visual condition, then just blocking the dominant eye um, and exactly. just trying to work with that for an hour, 
You'll get frustrated. Um, Actually, it comes up immediately for me when I put on those glasses. Yeah. I can go, wow. You can feel the shift sort of emotionally, Mm self-image. You're in a in a sort of uh, diminished state. You're not you're not feeling as strong yeah. right there. It's amazing, and particularly with me because my left eye is the one with the more cataract. So oh, as soon yeah. as I put them on, I go, "Yep, yeah, I'm going blind. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see anything through this eye." Yeah. Yeah. So and you have to be really careful because you're sending those those messages yeah. to yourself all the time mm-hmm. and reinforcing that you can't see that well. Right. And um, just like we said before, and it just increases the the unbalance between the strong eye and the weak eye right um, and a lot of people drop out from this work because they can't deal with it right they they don't want to deal with what's weak um you know sometimes you're, you're trying to get them to do an activity that is really focused in their weak spot you know literally right. you know for you your your blind spots for me my periphery right and why does anyone want to spend time in in that realm or in that in right. that area, it just brings up negative emotions and feelings and thoughts. Well, and so maybe that's the it, as it goes those two together, motivation and emotion. You got to realize that when you're trying to motivate yourself to do use something that is weak, you're going to hit this emotional resistance to it mm-hmm. because again, your self image is around being a certain way, and you're challenging that self image. You're going into your weak areas. So just expect some emotional uh, yeah. sort of kickback. And, and what's good about it, really, is that it does help you work through some of these yeah. things. I mean, yeah. um, and it, it helps you also figure out where the patterns start from, especially mm-hmm. if you've got a more challenging condition. Like that, that time I went to the cinema, and uh, remember I told this story oh, a few podcasts back. Yeah, and I was—I'd never been to the to the restroom or the bathroom. Um, during a movie before because it was dark and I was too afraid of right. falling over in front of everyone and I, I finally picked up the courage and I thought how can I be example if, right. if I don't do this so I went up and everything was fine and I came back and everything's fine and I went to step up uh, I went to turn the corner of one of the steps and my foot went through down onto the second level of chairs and Oof. then I went to bring my foot out and it was caught at a funny angle and my shoe got caught inside. Oh. So there was no way of quickly recovering from it. So, at least you didn't scream. Yeah, well, in, in the end, I, I just I, lo- I had to laugh at myself because I was so focused on not doing anything stupid. Right. And I just sat down in the middle, in the middle of this theater. I took my shoe off. I was like, I can't, I'm not, I can't be graceful anymore. I took yeah, my shoe yeah. off. And, well, that's, I think that's actually a good emotional reaction. Exactly. To accept it. Yeah. So And then I sat down and I, I felt the a little bit of pain in my ankle from where I had caught it. And I felt it seizing up, yeah. you know, the, and the negative emotion was building around it and the, yeah. and the muscle tension. And, and I sort of had to divert myself and just sort of laugh it off for a bit. Yes. Lesson to be learned. And I, a week later we went back to the cinema just, just to do that again. And I was fine. Yeah. Um, oh, but, good. But if I didn't have that awareness, then to this day, you know, I might never have gone back to the cinema. Exactly. Really. You know, you just don't know. We avoid these things. Yeah, and that comes to our third topic. You would have developed a habit. I'm, mm-hmm. I never go to the restroom. Yeah. You know, and that's why. Well, you already had that habit. And you were then challenging that habit. And it, it's almost like a downward spiral. Um, yeah. Because, say, for example, out of the camping this weekend, I said, right, well, I'm never going camping again. I embarrass myself. Right. Uh, I'm never going to the cinema because I've. I've put my foot through it and, and fell down right um oh, i'm not you know i'm not going to do this i'm not going to do that I'm, and before you know it more and more you're just doing less and less and less things right, right. and it just comes down to you your house bright mm-hmm. lights in the evening yep um watching tv you know and that and that's it and we, in which case you know we all know all this work is you either use it or, or you lose, lose it. it yeah so the more you go away from what's weak right. the weaker it becomes and, uh, you know, the, the less I use my weak cells in the dark, then, mm-hmm. then the weaker they are. Right. So it's really important to, to incorporate that habit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, it would be, you know, like walking down the street. If I um, look down where things are clearer, then I'm, you know, I'm cricking my neck. Mm-hmm. I'm creating tension in my shoulders. All these negative physical th- things that come from, oh, I can't, the 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 mindset that I can't see far away or that the fact that it's blurry means I won't look at it. Those are both yeah. habits or they're both mindsets and habits. Yeah. And then the, you're right. It's a spiral. Cause then you, you know, your body then is in a different place mm-hmm. and that's leading to poorer vision. It's just a spiral down. So, and on the opposite end, we've got the positive visual habit. Right. So, um, if you're trying to get rid of your glasses, 
trying to only wear them when you really need to wear them. Uh-huh. Um, you know, like driving or something uh, that's a safety issue. Or maybe things like shifting, looking at smaller and smaller details, right. taking breaks on the computer. You know, there's all these positive habits that we can incorporate. And just like what Richard was talking about, not just necessarily with the eyes, but the body, making sure that your head's nice yep. and straight, that you don't have, you know, tension in your shoulders. Right. All those things. It's just having a positive habit, which accumulation of which over the years, you know, if you if you took uh, two images of yourself, mm-hmm. one works with positive visual habits, trying to improve their vision over, mm-hmm. say, a 10 year span. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the same person that does the negative habits. Mm-hmm. You can almost plot on a graph. You could see yeah. how one how just two completely different directions. Yeah. Um, and that you might not be seeing immediate results or where you want to be, but be sure in that 10 year span, there's going to be a big difference in, in where you would have been if you hadn't have done those positive habits in the first exactly, place. Exactly. Okay, great. Well, very brief roundup there, and we look forward to go into this a lot more detail in the future. Um, but we hope that was just uh, enough there to give you a little bit more of an insight into how the mind is a big part of the holistic approach to self-healing with our vision. So I think it's about a good time to move on to question of the week. And the question of the week this week comes from an email that asks, what are pinhole glasses good for? Yeah, and this comes um, from there's there's quite a bit of, I wouldn't say buzz, but it's more of a common knowledge about pinholes. Um, There's a lot of vision improvement therapists use pinholes and you Mm -hmm. can see them on Amazon uh, quite easily. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess people are just, I mean, there's never really any instructions that goes along with these things or people don't really guide you. So uh, the email that we got was somebody just basically asking, you know, what do I do with them? What do I do with them? What are they good for? Yeah. And I guess we take a somewhat uh, conservative approach. There are people out there inventing eye exercises that uh, seem a little extreme to us with the pinhole glasses. But Mm -hmm. our approach is really to substitute pinholes for glasses. Yeah. So that when you, at a moment when you might reach for your prescription glasses, you can reach for your pinholes instead. And uh, they do correct a certain amount of astigmatism and uh, nearsightedness and farsightedness. Yeah, so I mean, in, in particular, certainly people with presbyopia see uh, an immediate right. uh, improvement with this to the point where they can probably read an extra couple of lines or extra, those that have downloaded our uh, free large and small print on our website, um, you know, could read maybe four or five paragraphs down just from wearing these pinholes. So they are really good if you're reading something yeah um in particular say in the evenings if if you're if you're somebody that reads in the in the evening times or at lunch time mm-hmm. um then you would just put these pinholes on instead of your prescription glasses and then it's clearer you don't you're not straining you don't feel like you're that you're missing your glasses mm-hmm. and you just start building the habit of using your natural vision right um instead of the glass in the glasses in the glasses uh, right. and it means that your eyes are having to work by themselves that little bit more to get that that crisp right. crisp vision so we stop the eyes from uh, becoming weak and fatigued and um and stops us from becoming dependent on the glasses right uh, especially with people you know that get reading glasses and then they end up wearing them all the time or mm-hmm. they end up getting bifocal or it's yeah. sort of it, it escalates escalates yeah um so, uh, but also with people uh, that have maybe have myopia, it can also be good reading signs. Maybe, exactly. Uh, That's what I would use them for too, is for reading street signs if you're walking along or uh, I guess you're not going to take them and put them on while you're driving. That might be a bit much. Yeah. So do we, 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 we do, uh, <laughs> we always try and encourage yeah. if there's any sort of safety issue, then you use yeah, what yeah. the optician uh, or your ophthalmologist advises you to do in a safe situation but in general we don't advise wearing pinholes all walking around like you're wearing sunglasses we yeah. we recommend having them available to be put on and off yeah it's it's almost like a hierarchy um where natural vision is your number one right goal here not to wear your glasses anymore and live your life without prescription or, or any crutch right um, and then the second thing is if you do need to read something and your vision isn't that clear yet, if you're still not where you want to be with your eye exercises, 
then you reach for the pinhole glasses. Right. And then the third thing is if it's a safety issue or it really is a point where you you really just need to use your glasses, then you go for the prescription. Right. And glasses. then we have the reduced prescription option too. So yeah. that you could get a, a pair of glasses prescribed for. So I guess we would... There's four then. For, it's, uh, I guess pres- in a way. <laughs> there is. Okay. So it's what we four. would really like you to have in your possession is... Probably your eyes, your twenty twenty prescription for your those critical moments. Yeah, a twenty forty prescription for lesser moments. Uh-huh. Pinhole glasses and your your naked eyes, which we hope you keep. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. So um, they almost have your little toolbox. Yeah, uh, on the side there, and that's yeah. sort of your tools in it. That's just, I guess, that sort of ties in with the mind a little bit there. And again, it's habit. Yeah, You know, I know when I stopped wearing my glasses, the most difficult thing was overcoming that waking up in the morning, bedside table, put on the glasses, yep. go on about my day. Um, and again, also we talk about self-image. If your self-image is somebody who wears glasses, mm-hmm. then, um, you know, then mm-hmm. you're going to wear them all the time. Yeah. And when you start breaking that self-image, when you start seeing photos of yourself without glasses, when you get used yeah. to looking in the mirror without glasses... That sort of changes your self-image a little bit. I guess it was a bit easier for me because people would say, well, you need to take those glasses off. And I'd be like, what do you mean I need to take these glasses off? They're like, they don't suit you. <laughs> That's great. I'd say, well, why don't they suit me? Well, because they make you look intelligent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I would get that all oh, the time. All, all the time. time. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, so it was easy for me yeah. to stop wearing glasses just so yeah. I could look stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, certainly, no so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> none needed. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so pinholes are really good for that. If you don't really know what we're talking about here, you can head over to the resources section on our website. Just look on the top tab bar there and it says resources and scroll down. I think it's, it's under reading aids mm-hmm. or reading tools and, um, you'll see a pair of pinhole glasses there and, uh, they don't work for everyone. They don't work That's for true. me. That's true. They don't. Yeah. Um, they work for me very well, both for the presbyopia and the myopia. And I think, for, you know, for a lot of people in general, they're a really good tool to use in vision improvement. And uh, unfortunately, again, we don't have too much time to go in to why they work today. Yeah. But hopefully in the future, we will uh, certainly uh, address that if you're yes. not able to find the answers yourself. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast, Envision Self Healing. And uh, if you want to find out a little bit more on how you can improve your eyesight or indeed you want a free vision improvement program, then you can head over to our website at envisionselfhealing.com. You can also download your free vision improvement ebook over there called A Modern Day Guide for Improving Eyesight, where we give you a lot more information on the basics of this work and how indeed we will feel that you can improve your eyesight and how modern day life is actually preventing you a lot of the time um, to improving your vision. And you can also, when you get those programs that are aimed a little bit more at more serious conditions, so you can find out how you can start improving your eyesight as soon as possible. You can also keep up to date with us on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for us uh, over there. And um, I will see if I can put those pictures up of uh, Richard Bowling. <laughs> and I've already forgotten already of some of the other... Oh, the tent, the, the five-star oh, tent, the tent sleeping yeah, on yeah. Uh, rocks. So I, have to, yeah. <laughs> I have to start posting these straight away. Luckily, uh, the iPhone has updated its software, so it allows you to post straight away. So ah. maybe it means that I won't be as forgetful with putting ah. these things up. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also subscribe and it means that you will get these uh, videos or podcasts uh, delivered straight to you whenever we release them. And indeed, if you're listening to this on iTunes, then you can also subscribe to us over there. So good luck with your eye exercises this week and happy healing. And have a good week.